to the body of Christ. We're going to, I'm pinch hitting today. And uh, so we're going to try to look at some things that I believe is something we are all under a lot of stress. And I think that uh, because of the times and the things that we're going through, uh, that uh, this stress can, be, can become overwhelming to us. And trying to work in the kingdom is not always an easy thing when we all don't understand certain things and uh, so we're just going to try to deal with something kind of off the cuff. And um, I pray it will be good for you because it's on my heart right now. And so I think that's it would just do it. Amen. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Yeshua, we glorify you. and We pray, Lord, that you lead us and guide us. Lord, we we. we we truly feel like we're in the last days and there's things that are coming at us in, in all sides. But they're not oblivious to you. You know, you have the foreknowledge, you have the insight, you know the beginning and the ending. And so Lord, lead us and guide us today and teach us about ourselves today so that we can love one another and love you. And this we ask in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. So um, actually, we, we're going to just read out of Leviticus, and these are, uh, will be some familiar passages of Scripture. And they come at, at, if you were, if you're studying Hebraically, it comes out of a parashat. Uh, Parashat Kodeshim, holy people. And we have a mandate to be holy. We have a mandate to be set apart. And that's what it, it really means. It doesn't mean perfect. It doesn't mean that we're going to do everything right. Don't mean we're going to say everything right. Doesn't mean that we're going to think everything right. But what it is asking us to do is to be like our Lord, set apart. And if we're set apart for him, then everything that is not perfect in us can be worked out. Amen? Because after all, that's what he bled and died for. He didn't, he didn't bled and die for our perfection. He bled and died for our frailty. What we were unable to do, he did. And he paid the price for it so that we could live no matter what. Amen? So let's look at Leviticus. Um, and it's just, just on my heart. And I'm just going to try to walk through it uh, using Leviticus, but also using Proverbs. Amen? And... Um, so let's go to Leviticus 19.17, and let's read the passage there. <clears throat> because we need to understand some things about us as human beings and how this, this parish out of Kodeshim is supposed to tie us together. Because it's instructions, and uh, the book of Leviticus, or Vayikra, as it's actually named Hebraically, its real name, it is the, it is, and he called. So if you look at the book, he called us into this. He also calls us to be in agreement with the instructions that he gives us to live out in the kingdom, to be able to get along with each other, to be able to operate, so that those outside of the kingdom could look and see an example and desire, desire to be a part of that. 
See, when, when someone is drawn to something, it's because it is something uh, that it, it captures their interest and they are drawn to want to be a part of that. So in this instruction, in these verses here, we're going to see how God wants us to be with one another so that the kingdom will be attractive to other people. And that's really the crux of it, because the book of Leviticus trains the priest, right? That's the training manual for the priest. This is what the priests do, and we are now a nation, a kingdom of priests, right? Okay. So let's keep that in mind. We are priests. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. This thing is very powerful. It has several instructions in there that helps us to deal with one another. It's telling us first, we can't have hatred. We can't have that. in our heart. And here's the thing about the heart. It fools us. It, it, it causes us to think that we're in right standing, particularly with God, and we're not. Now, how, how, do, how can you get tricked like that? It's simple. Your knowledge of the word of God, his rules and regulations that have not been accurately understood by the wind. We've been talking about the wind, right? So if I study Torah and I take in the knowledge of it, but I don't take in the essence of it, which only comes by the Holy Spirit, it will become my Torah and not God's Torah. And then you began to see imperfections in one another and you begin to call them out, but in a manner in which you could develop hatred. I, I really want y'all to kind of understand where I'm, what I'm talking about because Sometimes we can read the scriptures and not fully understand them and then stand on a scripture when you don't fully understand it. That could cause you some problems with one another. And then it says, so we can't have hatred. And then it also saying that, but we are to reprimand and this word rebuke really means, if we kind of break it down, it means to, to stand sharply with a warning. But So it's telling us, though, we are to hold each other accountable and not, this word suffer, it, it messes people up because we don't understand. Again, you got to start looking at the words and, and looking at behind it. It's actually saying, don't permit it. It's not saying suffer as we understand the English word suffer. Because for us, suffering in English would mean deal with it. No, it, this means don't permit it and not permit sin upon him. Now, this word upon, if you get into it, it's talking about don't let it remain on them. Don't let it stay there, because it, it, just like uh, uh, last Sunday when I was talking about the, the wind or the Spirit of God was lighting on Yeshua, and it, remain, it said it rested upon him, and mean it stayed. So it's saying do not permit sin, which means missing the mark. Don't allow your brother or sister to miss the mark and stay there. 
Don't, because you got to help one another so, so that <laughs> you can love them. Thou shalt not avenge. Wow. Let me read it. Let me read this here. Do not hate thy brother in your heart, and this is from the complete Jewish Bible, but rebuke your neighbor frankly. Frankly. Be honest. Be direct. Don't beat around the bush. Tell them directly what's wrong. Because if you don't do it honestly and frankly, they can misinterpret what you're trying to say. So you got to be direct. You got to be clear. So that you, so that you won't carry sin because of them. Now, how do we carry sin when we are in disagreements? If we don't deal with it frankly and honestly, then guess what? We're now carrying the missing the mark. Now we're carrying it. And we, that can be literally carrying it because, listen, we got to understand, and I'm going to get into anger in a minute, because once that happens, we begin, it's like taking sin. If I could, uh, us military guys, we had a rucksack. And generally, your rucksack, when I was in, could hold 70 pounds easy. Now, to strap 70 pounds on your back and walk, that's why we did what we call force marches, and we used to train with the pack and all your gear and do a 12-mile road march so you could get used to carrying all that weight. And boy, when you took it off, it was almost like you could fly because... because because you had, a, you, and they would, they would do it. When I was in, stationed in Korea, they, they, they would weigh your thing. They would weigh it and say, okay, second division didn't play. We were called fit to fight. That was our model, fit to fight. So we, we loaded it up. They weighed it, put it on your back. You had full gear, weapons, everything, 12-mile march. That's what we did every payday. So before you had payday activities, you had to do a 12-mile march. So once you took that thing off, you were light. You were like, whoa, you felt like a new person. So what I'm getting at is that what, this is like carrying a backpack. Sin is like carrying a heavy load on you. So, so all right, so don't you don't, that you don't, won't carry sin because of him. And then it says, don't take vengeance on or bear a grudge against any of your people. Rather, love your neighbor as yourself. I am Adonai. These are instructions that are given to us. And obviously, if you look at the core of it, it's, it's, it's letting us know that times are going to come when we're not going to be in agreement and we're going to get angry with one another, and when we get angry, we're going to have vengeance, we're going to bear grudges, and this is going to stop the movement of the kingdom. It's going to stop it. It's guaranteed. And if it was a garden hose and the, and, and the water was the Holy Spirit, it's like picking it up and, and, and bending it and crimping it. Stop everything. It stops you. It stops your brother. And it stops all that know. Okay. Okay. So we can't bear a grudge. And whether we want to accept it or not, it is in our humanity to avenge and to hold grudges. I don't care who you are and what you think you know or even how spiritual you think you are. This part of you 
is in you. And if you don't do something like these instructions are telling you, because the key is in the bottom half where it says, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Disagreements, disputes are going to happen. But what do we do with them when they happen? Let's go to Proverbs 10. So keep that, keep that now. And because this is in Kodashim, the parashat holy people, it's telling us that this is a part of the instructions you got to keep in order for us to stay set apart. Because the world holds grudges, they avenge, they hate, they do all of that. But in order to be set apart, you're going to have to adhere to these instructions. And everybody just need to, everybody needs to understand you will get angry. This is a fact, and it's not going to change. That's right. Yeshua got angry. The key was he didn't sin. All right. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 12. Wow. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. So... Hatred stirs up strifes, but love covers all sins. So, where, so now you know where Solomon is getting the wisdom to talk about this from, Leviticus. Anger is a seed. Hate is a tree. Hate is the tree. Anger is the seed. Hate is the tree. But I'm going to tell you, since we're talking plant terms, love is like Roundup. Spread on that thing, it won't grow. Right? Now, Augustine said this. A fourth century spiritual leader of North Africa. North Africa? Okay. Anger is a dangerous emotion that is easy to foster and hard to stop. What did I say? Hard to stop. It's easy. You can, we can get angry quickly, but it's hard to stop. It's like a freight train loaded going down the tracks, and you try to stop it on a dime. No, it's not that easy. It is not that easy. And, and I don't care where you are, once you get angry, it's hard to stop. In many ways, anger is the opposite of love. Paul told us to be patient and kind, not jealous, not boastful, not proud, rude, or selfish, not easily angered, and it keeps no record of wrongdoing. Let's read that. Go to 1 Corinthians 13, and we'll do 4 and 5. Let's just look at it so you see that it's in the Word. So if you're taking notes, there it is. And I'm going to come back to Proverbs, though. Uh, charity suffers long. And charity is talking about love. All right? Suffers long. Now, this one, this suffereth is talking about it deals with it. It, it, it works with it. It doesn't, it, it, it. It doesn't allow you to go, to go off. It, it, it allows you to hang in there patiently for a long period of time. All right? That's what love would do. Well, anger would mess you up. And is, it is kind, charity, envy if not, which is jealousy. Charity, a love, vaunt if not itself. It doesn't, it doesn't present itself as more than it should. Right? It's not puffed up. Listen, 
if you have some knowledge of things, you have to be careful because if you get angry, that knowledge can become a weapon that you will use against your brother and sister. That's why I started off, he said, do uh, honestly and frankly, but, it's, but you're not angry when you do it. But let me tell you, once you get angry, you know what the church folks love to do? When we get angry with one another, we start looking for the swords in the scriptures to win the battle that we trying to win. The problem is it can be against your brother and sister. And then it's a weapon. It's no longer love. So it is better that if you're angry to not deal with it right now. Give it time. And I've experienced this. I have. And for those of you who've been around here for a while, I did it, I taught on it and did it right in front of this pulpit and tried to put things together because I realized in my anger, I didn't. I didn't do it right. And sometimes we have the right, but I didn't do it right. Y'all understand what I'm saying? I had the right, but I didn't do it right. I had the right to do what I did, but I didn't do it the way God wanted me to do it or the way he would do it. He doesn't rule us like that. He doesn't rule us with anger. Could you imagine if he ruled us with anger? You'd be gone. But when he's angered, he sits on the mercy seat, and then he deals with us. And thank God for that, right? Outside of that, we would be, what is it, people most miserable. People would be disappearing, just poof, gone. What happened to him? <laughs> the Lord was upset. Poof, what happened to him? Poof, what happened to her? Man, we pastor might be sitting here by yourself. Or you might be gone. You might not be here either. Poof. What happened to pastor? Lord got mad with him. <laughs> okay. So, why, so, but anger is impatient. It's unkind. It, exceed, it is exceedingly jealous and proud. Listen, anger is jealous and proud. Anger itself is jealous and proud. So it's saying that anger comes with this character. So if you're getting angry, watch yourself, because now you're about to be jealous and unkind. Right. Angry people are often rude. Anger stems from selfishness and keeps a strict record of wrongdoing. When your brother and sister sin against you, it's best that you forget it. But listen, all of us, all of us can handle, can, can run into this because we anger, so we, it hangs on a little bit. It hangs on, and it hangs on, and it hangs on, and it hangs on, and it hangs on. And then you start thinking about it, and after you start thinking about it, then you start multiplying it, and, and, you know, because remember, I just said anger is a seed and hatred is a tree. And then after a while, I can't stand them. Listen, when you start talking like that, I can't. T remember, we talk about God's people because I started off with Leviticus and said, you cannot have this against your people. So we, brothers and sisters in Christ, so if we start talking and feeling this kind of thing and that's crossing your mind, listen, the seed is growing into a tree. Yeah. So we got to deal with it, right? Go back to Proverbs 17, 9. <sighs> okay. I, I, I want so much that, that we, we all grow to the place I want to be, because I'm here to tell you, I'm, 
I'm speaking for me. But I know in speaking for me, I can help you. I'm saying we all got to watch it. Everybody got to watch it. He that covereth a transgression seeketh love. What is it? He seeks love. If you willing to cover a person's wrongdoing, and I'm going to talk about how to cover it because it's already, we already read how to cover it. Seek to cover it seeks love, but he that repeateth a matter separateth, and it says friends. Separate friends. Let me, let me, let me, let me read it here. I like it. I like it. I like it. <laughs> he who conceals an offense promotes love. So we're promoting it. But he who harps on it can separate even close friends. That's self-explanatory. Because what we are used to doing as a people, we're used to gathering in our groups of friends and repeating what was wrong. This is a fact. This, this is a fact that, that there's nobody that hasn't done this there is no one who is not guilty of this because everybody wants an ally. Everybody wants an ally. Everybody wants somebody to agree with them when they are feeling a certain way. The danger in that is what I just read because then others are tainted and then they pick up someone else's fight. And, it, and it, it never turns out right. It never, ever turns out right. It has to be, we can't do it, right? Anger looks for a fight. Love looks for a way to forgive and overlook wrongdoing. That's different. Love says, you know what? Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, you did it. But listen, how can I, how can I put this thing away? How can I get it out from in front of my heart and mind that you did this to me? That's somebody that's looking for a solution, not a fight. Hate stirs up a fight. To arouse, to awaken, or to set something in motion. That's why it starts with stirs up. Stirring up something. It's like dust. And before long, everybody's choking and blind and got grit in their eyes and upset and disturbed. First, hate starts the fight. It doesn't merely join in where a fight has already begun. First, I need to start it. I'm going to start something. Because I'm upset about something, and I'm going to start something. I'm going to do something. Some of the riots and things that's been going on is because there's a hatred and an anger building up. And so I'm going to start something, and I'm going to do something because I'm angry. Many quarrels are unnecessary. And they're the result of a contentious spirit. Second, looking back on a fight and analyzing it, one will often discover the root cause is hatred. There's always a root to a fight. How did we end up in a fight? 
There's a root to it. That's why when you go back and you start to question these things, then you find out, here's the root. Now we know. Go to Proverbs 19.11. We ain't going to be long. Okay. The discretion of a man deferreth his anger. Listen to that. The discretion, the discernment, which you need to win for. You need to win for that discernment, that discretion. Jesus first went in the temple and he saw what they were doing. But his discretion said, not right now. Sometimes you have to look again to see if this is really what I'm looking at. I see something right away. I got an idea of what it is. But could I be wrong? Let me, let me hold back for a minute and look at it a little bit closer. i never forget it. This child over here, my daughter's godmother, dearest friend to our, our family. Y'all know her. She's been here with her husband. We were all stationed on Fort Dix together. That's how we met. Her car was down, and she had called Sheila because Sheila didn't drive at the time. And she asked, could Dottie run me to church? Can you go into church? And I said, sure, I can take you to church. I was in the car with her, and I was taking her to church. And somebody who had just met my wife that was in my unit, another female soldier, and they had just exchanged numbers at the family and friends thing. She called my wife and said, I just saw your husband with a woman in the car. And, 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 and my wife said, yeah, I know that woman that's my best friend and he's taking her to church. Because her car was down. So when you see something, and sometimes when you hear something, you don't know all of it, but you make it. If you don't use some discretion, you could get angry at what you heard or what you saw or think you saw. But look what it says, when a man's discretion defers his anger and it is his glory to pass over a transgression. Wow. So even if I see it and it is what it is, when you say pass over the, the transgression, it means I'm not going to hold you to it. But it doesn't mean, as we read in Leviticus, that I don't get a chance to come to you after I got myself settled and sure about what's going on, maybe check the scriptures to know if what I'm thinking is right and am I seeing it right, and then I approach you honestly and frankly with love so you can receive it. See, now we're working with the wind. Look at uh, Genesis twenty-nine thirty-one. Wow. I, I pray, I just pray that, because we, we, we got to be able to get along. And we got to be able to get this love going so the wind can blow. It's not going to blow without any love. Now listen, look, look at this. And the Lord saw that Leah was hated. He opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. 
Now, look at this word hate. Watch this. Now, this isn't the hate we think it is. It's really saying he preferred Rachel to Leah. He is said to hate Leah in this context. The context refers to the fact that he did not prefer Leah. So Jacob probably did not intensely dislike Leah. All of the demonstration of the all it demonstrates is the range of meaning of this word hate, which is sane. If you look it up, it has many degrees of it. But you got to understand which part in the Hebrew language, according to the context, are we talking about preferred? Or is this hate in terms of, I really can't stand you? But it's the same word. Context. Intensity from not referring someone to intensely disliking them makes the statement hate stirs up disputes. Comprehensible choosing self-desires rather than the needs of other causes disputes. If you thinking solely about yourself, watch it because you're going to stir up a dispute because you're only thinking about you and you're not thinking about the other person. So sometimes, even if you're quoting a scripture to them or a principle of scripture, be careful because the meaning of that scripture is always twofold because none of his word comes to bring division. So if it doesn't come to bring division, be careful even how you dispense it because if you're being selfish, about how you use it, it's going to cause a dispute. And then we wonder and say, well, I gave them the word, but I didn't understand it. How did you deliver it? Did you give it to them thinking about them as well as yourself, or did you just deliver it thinking about you? So now, we, because we are lacking the things we're supposed to understand about this word hatred and anger and all these things, now we done turned the word into a weapon to kill one another, and that's not the purpose. If it's not bringing us together, you got to back up and say, not what they did wrong, what did I do wrong? Start with you. No one else. Lord, if I gave him your word and it still stirred up a dispute, then what did I do wrong in the delivery? Was the love you had for me and going to the cross, was it in the delivery that I gave to my brother when I gave it? Was that same kind of love in there? Because if it was, guess what it would have done? It would have drawn us back together. Now you get another part to understanding. Go to, uh, I don't even, Matt, now you get a better understanding of Matthew 18. He said, if your brother hear you, then you have gained them back. It's still something in there for you to understand how was it delivered. Was the package wrapped in love or was it wrapped in selfishness? I want to deliver to my brothers and sisters an unselfish, loving word that we can be restored to one another and not driven further apart. Yes, 
Many disputes are the result of someone desiring to be right. The desire to be right outweighs the need for harmony and friendship. I want friends. I don't want enemies. Because if I gain enemies, guess who's going to have to fight them? And guess whose help I'm going to need to fight those enemies? And without the Lord, I'm subject to get my head cracked in. <laughs> Thus, the one who starts a quarrel because he wants to be right hates the other person. Now listen, I just told you there's degrees of this word hate. So in this case, it's saying that they prefer themselves more than the other person. And the reason why we got to be careful with that is because my mother used to say self-preservation is the first law of nature. That's what she used to say. We all want to preserve ourselves. But what kind of life did Yeshua live? He lived a life that of sacrifice where he said, I lay my life down so you can live. So that's a different, see the difference. I hope this is helping. Let me go one more place and we're going we're gonna to close this down. Well, 1911 is good. I just want to stay here for a minute. Go back to 1911, because I want to I touch one more part of that, and then Proverbs 1911. When the Spirit of God is working with us like we're supposed to, and we have to seek for him to work with us, we got to make sure that we call on him before we do anything. Again, the discretion of a man Defer his anger. I want to I chime in a little bit deep on this word prefer. Jesus had an opportunity in his humanity to be angry with those who opposed him every time he was opposed. And he, and he came and walked into opposition from day one. When, when, when he read the scroll and said, this day, this thing is fulfilled in your hearing. And, every, and he got up and walked, and everybody like, man, who is this clown? Who does he think he is? He's not from my schools. He ain't from the house of Hillel. He ain't from the house of Shemaiah. He, where he from? But the scholars said Galilee had some, has, they had some schools too. We, uh, we have to look at Jesus deeper because if our example is not like his, we missed it. Because a disciple has to be disciplined as to the same degree as his master. He said, I always do what the father say. I always do. So from the father to me to you, we all have to be on the same thing. We have to run with the same thread. We cannot add, take away to any of what the wind has brought. And I told you that he will be with you alongside to help you. The spirit of truth, not a lie that you concocted in your own mind about your brother and sister. Because no matter what you think about one another, if they were the last soul on earth that needed saving, he would have hung there for them. So you have no, you can't cast them off. You can't do it. So when you conceal, defer your discretion and conceal 
an offense or when to address it. You got to know when. Because there's times that you need more information before you can actually address it. But in the microwave society of the West that we live in now, we want it done right now. I want this thing answered right now. I want something done right now. And we don't even have all the pieces to the puzzle yet. So if you address it, what you end up doing is splintering the problem into many others. And then when you go to address it, what is the motive? Is it to drive each other out? Or is it to bring us in? <laughs> or do I want to bring this up for the good of others who have been injured or for the good of the wrongdoer? Conceal that which is merely a personal hurt and address only that which is necessary to benefit others. So now, if it's a personal hurt of mine, conceal it. Shut your mouth. Stop telling everybody that they did you wrong. It's a personal hurt, which means it has to be handled personally between the two. So now you're seeing another portion to Matthew 18. But you see, its root started in Leviticus. So now, how would you want to be treated? So now, conceal is a personal hurt, but you bring forward the things that others have been hurt. I'm going to read that again. All right? <laughs> conceal that which is merely a personal hurt to you and address only that which is necessary to benefit others. If it's not, if it's just going to benefit you, hold on. Wait a minute. Give it some time. Because you may be able to figure out some things and say, you know what, <laughs> that really wasn't nothing. Let that go. Chalk it up. Oh, no. And don't even have to make it an issue. But when others are going to be hurt, then it has to be addressed. And in a church setting, it has to go through the head. When, when they had a dispute about Acts 15, what do we do with the Gentiles? They get in the Holy Ghost. What do we do with them? They brought it to the council, and the head had to work with it, and then they had to make a decision on what to do. And guess what? And it was simple. Because it came down to, if you go back and read it, it came down to, well, it seems good to God because he's given them the Holy Ghost and they're not going through all this stuff. They're still eating pork chops. So why would we? Now, that was after some deliberation and some people had time to look at it and to maybe midrush, maybe do some things and then figure out, okay, well, hey, listen, we got the answer already because... They, they speaking in tongues, and they got the Holy Ghost already. And like I said, they're still eating pork chops. And some of them wearing miniskirts. So God is not withholding this thing the way we thought. We thought we were the only ones that going to get it. Oh, no, no, now there's a greater degree now. Now Yahweh is opening up a greater degree of things. So maybe we got to go back and regroup. So, again... In closing, we got work to do, and we can't do it hating one another. We can't do it in disputes, strife, and anger. It will never be accomplished. We have to review ourselves first, and then do things the right way. Amen? God bless you. Thanks for tuning in. Look forward to seeing you again. Amen. God bless you. Amen.